The second lesson comes to us from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And that faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as you also, as also did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. This passage from Acts 3 comes right after a case where Peter and John were going to the temple to pray. They encountered a beggar who had been lame from birth. And some may be familiar with the Bible song that inspired this passage right before today's lesson. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he went walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God. Maybe I should have had Millicent sing that for us. <laughs> this well-known lame man, this man who'd been at the temple probably a large portion of his life, was cavorting in the temple court, even though he had been born lame. And he drew an amazed crowd. And seizing the moment, Peter preached the sermon from our Acts passage to those who were gathered. Now, sadly, this passage has been used to support anti-Semitism. Peter's word about the crowd's part in the death of Jesus and his use of the word ignorance have been misinterpreted. And to avoid slipping into this prejudice, we need to keep several key things in mind. The disciples had also acted in ways that were tragic and horrible during Jesus' trial. Judas was one of their own. And when faced with the violence and treachery of the night, the other disciples scattered and hid. When Peter is speaking to the crowd, he's speaking to fellow citizens of this conquered nation of Israel. He's not preaching down to them. He's eagerly yearning for their deliverance from the evil that binds their lives as it had bound Peter's. And Peter knows it's possible because God delivered him and forgave him despite his own denials. In the Acts 3 story, one of the places we find ourselves is in the lives of the astonished onlookers at the temple. We too are trapped in ignorance, and we need God to cure us of this. So what is this ignorance that Peter is identifying? Well, the way of of this word that ignorance is used in the New Testament points to a lack of understanding about divine things. And there's no shame in that. Peter is trying to help his fellow members of the Jewish faith gain an understanding of how the life, death, and particularly the resurrection of Jesus have provided new knowledge about God and the lives of humanity. Do we have an ignorance that needs curing? We certainly do, and ours might actually be a sadder case than Peter and his brothers in the Jewish faith. We're taught about Jesus about how he lived with us and helped others who were hurting. We learn the story of his suffering for our sake. We hear and proclaim the resurrection, 
And yet too often we go about our lives as though all that knowledge means very little to our day-to-day living. The first ignorance I believe we can identify is this. We remain ignorant of the suffering of others and are ignorant of how our actions contribute to that. And often we maintain this ignorance to protect our very comfortable lives. Suffering, of course, is a deeply personal experience. Some families suffer significant grief that seems way more than other folks when they lose multiple family members. Some people suffer because of heavy stress and grief from jobs. Medical workers are fall into that category. Some individuals carry the pain of mental illness and other fails Others fail to realize how much pain they have on a day-to-day basis. People with chronic or deadly physical illness suffer physically and mentally and spiritually. Poverty brings suffering. Religious intolerance we know looking around our world brings suffering. Despots cause millions to suffer. But in every case where there is extreme suffering, you find those individuals who handle that suffering and they find joy and they even help other people. God is working to heal our ignorance and make us into disciples that can find and share with others that joy and that love, even when we suffer. Jesus' life and his willingness to suffer deeply shows that God takes all of humanity's suffering very, very seriously. The gospel does not proclaim a pie-in-the-sky, by-and-by approach to life. Jesus, when he saw suffering in the world, he worked to relieve it. God wants to open our eyes in honest ways to suffering. God wants to help us see where we are wounded and where other people are wounded. God wants us to learn the true causes of suffering so we can be healed and we can help others be healed. Peter's words show us he has gained some of that knowledge. He knew he wasn't wealthy. The apostles, uh, despite overseeing the many gifts that came to the church in Jerusalem, never used any of those for personal gain. He could see this man born lame was truly suffering. And the only solution he knew was that money was not going to be something that could fix this. He didn't have that to give him. But Peter, healed of his wounds caused by the betrayal of Jesus, knew what God could do for this man. He knew what God could provide. And by God's power, this man was healed. And so the man went from suffering to dancing with glee in the temple court. God cures our insensitivity to the suffering of others by calling us to help those who are hungry and hurting. God grants us the leading of the Holy Spirit so we can identify ways to help others that aren't just having to do with money or our own abilities. God asks us to show others when they need care that they can come and walk on this journey with us. And as they do, they also become aware of the suffering of others and learn how they can help. The Apostle Creed reminds us that on the third day, Jesus arose from the dead. The Apostle's Creed reminds us that suffering and death in life are very, very real. But the good news in those words is that death can lead to resurrection. What wonderful miracles can happen when God removes that ignorant belief that death is the final answer? We will understand that hungry people in our community and elsewhere can be fed. And we can be a part of that. We can recognize that things like mental health challenges are not labels to be affixed to people forever, but invitations for us to offer healthy and loving support. We'll see the loneliness in the faces of others as pleas for acceptance and a chance to offer love. We'll see beyond the shades of death all around us that God is bringing resurrection and new life. When God removes our ignorance and helps us believe the resurrection can come from life, we can see that challenges in our world like racism and violence and deep divisions aren't just political issues to fight about, 
but invitations by God to work with others to overcome hatred and fear and find real solutions that can work right around us. The disciples went to the temple that day for a time of prayer. The faithfulness in prayer of the early church was key to their life. Before Pentecost, the disciples were gathered in the upper room and they were praying and God poured out the Holy Spirit. Praying individually and with others changes us in amazing ways. Certainly we draw closer to God when we pray. And God also draws us together as a people. And God changes our hearts when we pray, removing what blinds us. God can cure our ignorance of suffering and our ignorance of the truth of the resurrection when we turn to God in prayer. Like the man cured of his lameness, we are hobbled by our ignorance. It prevents us from helping those who are suffering. It prevents us from experiencing joy when we do that helping. We can become like Peter who looked at suffering and offered a true solution so that that man could dance with joy. We can be the lame man who finds the burden of our ignorance removed so we can dance for joy. Let us pray for God to remove our ignorance so we can spread joy and we can experience joy. Amen.